Christy Titus here, and I'm with Katie Godfrey from Kestrel Ballistics. Hey Christy, we're here today to talk about the Kestrel 5700 with Hornady Ford Off. Ford Off stands for four degrees of freedom, and Hornady has a fourth calculation, which is the angle of attack, which makes this program completely unique to Hornady. It does. And with this partnership, we've taken the Ford off out of your phone and we're putting it into the Kestrel. And setting it up in your phone is extremely easy. You just go into the Kestrel Link Ballistic app as you would normally to build a gun profile. Yep, and then you can transfer everything onto your Kestrel and you're ready to go to the range. Well, let's get started and we'll walk everyone through how we can set up a gun profile and take us to the range through the whole process. Once you get the Kestrel Link Ballistic app open on your phone, what's the first step we want to take? The first thing you need to do is connect your Kestrel to your app. You want to go into the menu in your Kestrel and make sure your Bluetooth is turned on and it's set for PC Mobile. Go to Connect Device and look for the serial number of your unit. Okay, that's completed and now it's pairing. Uh, the app is going to recognize that you're using one of the Kestrel with Hornady's and it's going to open up all the Hornady information. The first thing that we want to do is build out a gun. So we're going to build a gun on the app and then we're going to transfer it to the Kestrel to really unlock all of the Ford off. Okay, so I'm done with the Kestrel for the time being. Yes. So I'm going to go into the gun profile management and I'm going to click the button at the top to add a gun profile. Mm -hmm. Once you're in the profile editor, you're going to first want to go to the bullet data section. Now under that you have a couple of options. You can select the button that says factory ammo, which features all of the Hornady factory ammunition. Or you can select the bullet library button, which includes all of Hornady's factory ammunition and other manufacturers of ammunition as well. So it's a little more comprehensive if you're using a different manufacturer. Today I'm shooting a six millimeter Creedmoor. So for this application, I'm gonna go in the 243 bullets and then I go down and I'm gonna find the Hornady bullets and I'm shooting the 108 grain ELD match. I select that information and it's going to ask me if I want to select a solver of a G1, a G7, or the Ford Off program. I would choose the Ford Off option. You're using the Kestrel with Ford Off and you really want to unlock all the potential that this unit has. The next input that the system asks for is your gun data and the first option is your muzzle velocity. It has a default muzzle velocity manually entered into this, so you'll want to input your own muzzle velocity. There's a couple ways to do this. The first way you can input this velocity is actually taking your box of ammunition and on the back of the box using the listed muzzle velocity. The other option is to actually chronograph your own muzzle velocity if you have that ability at home. Today I'm going to use the muzzle velocity that is actually listed on the Hornady box and input that into my data program. The next input that it asks for is my zero range. For this I'm going to add in 100 yards. Once we transfer to the Kestrel, we're going to talk about zero angle and make some changes there. Absolutely. And next it asks for the bore height. So to measure your bore height, you want to take a set of calipers or a tape measure, whatever you have at home, and you want to measure the center of your bore to the center of your optic. And for this, I'm going to use this really um, well-defined gas port that's here and to the center of my optic. And for this, I'm roughly 2.7 inches. So that will be the data that I enter in there. The next input it's going to ask is my barrel's twist rate, and that should be listed through your manufacturer if you don't know online. The last input is scope data, and there's a few options. Can you explain to everybody what those options are? Yeah, so we have a couple different options. We have MIL and we have MOA, and MOA is actually in TMOA and SMOA. Uh, the difference between the two is true minute of angle versus shooter's minute of angle. Shooter's minute of angle is a rounded number. It was created so that it was easier to do that math in the field. But the Kestrel's doing all the math for you. So true minute of angle is the one that you would want to use if you're shooting MOA. Exactly. And if you're not and you're shooting mills, just simply select the mill button. The next input is axial form factor. And the default setting on this is 1.0. So for the sake of starting, we're gonna leave this at 1.0 at the default. And we'll actually address this a little bit later on when we get to the range. Yeah. The last input that's requested is the MV temp table. Can you explain to users what that is for exactly? 
Yeah, in the Hornady Fordoff application, this is their temperature sensitivity factor. And for people that are reloading, Hornady actually took all the powders into their labs, did extensive testing, and they give you a predictive sensitivity for various temperatures. If you're using factory ammunition, you can leave these categories blank and simply save your firearm profile and we're ready to transfer it to our Kestrel. Make sure that you name your profile before you save it. Now that you have it saved in your gun profile, you're just going to select it and then hit send profiles to get it right onto your Kestrel. You'll know your phone and your Kestrel are connected if the Bluetooth symbol is illuminated green. Now that the gun is saved in your Kestrel, we're just going to go in, check the inputs and update some things like zero angle. So find the gun in your Kestrel by going down to the gun menu, hit the center button to go into the gun. And the first thing that you'll see is your muzzle velocity. Right below that is your bullet file. Because we're using one of the Ford off files, this is what the file says. The BC, you'll notice, is completely blanked out, and that's because we're using Ford off rather than a BC based. Scroll down until you find ZR. ZR is our zero range, but because we're using Ford off, we really want to unlock all the potential Ford off, and we're going to change it over to zero angle. So hit the center button to go into that, toggle to the right to change it from range to angle. And then we're going to go down once and hit the center button to start calibrating our zero angle. The Kestrel gives you a full tutorial, so even if you don't have time to watch the video, you'll be able to do it over and over again. Uh, if you don't know the latitude of where you're shooting, when you connect to the app, you can update your latitude in your Kestrel and it'll apply it to all of your guns. Hit continue to move on, and now we have to capture our environmentals. To do that, you're going to hit the go button, the center button, to start your capture, and then we're going to swing our Kestrel. Swinging the Kestrel allows airflow to get moved over the sensors. We have our temperature sensor here, our humidity sensor, and our barometer, our barometric pressure sensor. You want to do it for about 30 seconds, stop, and make sure that your temperature is stabilized. Hit the center button again to capture it, and you've moved on to entering your distance to the target. Yes, yeah, so our first range we're going to impact today will be 100 yards. Great, so put in that 100 yard, and you can hit the right or the left button to move up or down. Hit the down button one more time and hit the center button to continue on. It's now asking you to capture your direction of fire. Point the back of the unit towards the target, hit the center button, and you're capturing. The next input that it wants is our wind. And because we're in the shoot house, obviously we're not hitting any winds here. But you can actually hold it right outside, find the wind, and start your capture. With wind, you want to hold it for about a 10 second average so that the Kestrel can pick up both the average and any gusts that may be coming along. So start your capture and then end your capture. So in this part, the Kestrel actually does allow you to go in and manually input the winds. We didn't get accurate winds by putting our hand outside of the shoot house. And because you know the winds downrange, you can go in and change what your direction of wind is and the speeds. Once you're happy with that, just hit the center button to continue on. And now we're ready to shoot. To utilize the zero angle tool, we're going to fire five shots downrange at the desired zeroing point we want. So for the sake of this today, I'd like to zero my rifle at 100 yards. I'll shoot five shots downrange. We'll go down and we'll measure the impact of those five shots over my aiming point. We'll gain an average and we'll input that data. Now we're going to evaluate my five shot group and one thing we're going to look at here is my windage needs to be pushed left about a tenth. But we're not going to focus on that. The only thing that really matters at this point is how high we are above our aiming point and that's what we're going to measure. Mm -hmm. So you want to go your aiming point to the center of your impact. So on this particular one we are 0.4 high. The next one is the same, so 0 0.4, 0 0.2, the next one is also 0 0.2, and our final round is 0.2. Okay. So what we're going to do is take the, add all of these up, mm -hmm. and then we're going to take and divide them by five and get our average. Okay. So it's 1.6. Divide that by five is 0.32. Okay. So that's what we're going to input into our Kestrel. Perfect. Yep, and that's giving us our zero angle. Go down to go. 
and we are going to hit the center button to accept it. One thing you want to keep in mind when you're doing this as well, if you'll notice the trend of all of my impacts is just, well, it's 0.32 high. What you want to make sure is that if you are trending one direction, either above or below zero, that you don't go to the negative. So if you are shooting just slightly below your aiming point, go ahead and adjust your elevation turret so that you impact slightly high of your zeroing point. Right. So we did good. Perfect. Now that we have our zero angle set, let's go back to the gun and we'll all help you set up the axial form factor. Sounds great. Christy, we've inputted what the zero angle is, but can you give me a little bit more about what it actually means? Absolutely. The benefit of the zero angle is that it accounts for any errors from your point of aim to your point of impact that may be less than the adjustment value of your optic. The last step is that we want to verify that our data matches our bullet drop at distance and then we can calibrate the axial form factor if necessary. Yeah, and there is a tutorial in the Kestrel that will walk you through the steps of calibrating your axial form factor so it keeps it nice and simple. Alright, let's shoot. So for this first target, it's 520 yards. I'm going to have you dial 2.2. Okay. Spotter Great. ready. Impact. Okay, you hit right side of target, so shade just a little bit left of the target, but don't go off. Shooter ready. Spotter on. Impact. That was a perfect shot, and it looked like it hit absolutely center. So for the sake of this example, um, our point of aim and point of impact match absolutely perfect. So the data we've received from the Ford Off program is perfectly aligned. What do users do, Katie, if, for example, their data is off just a little bit? Yeah, just go into the gun profile, scroll all the way down to Cal Axial Form Factor, and follow the tutorial. And it's very simple to calibrate your axial form factor and get your data right on. So as you can see, it's really simple to set up and to use this product. And if you guys want to learn more about the product, go to HornadyKestrel.com.